Yes, 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 yes. Um, first, welcome to Come Well. Into another episode, another doorway, another portal, entitled, Am I As, As I Am, As You Are. As You Are. Um, <clears throat> before I start today's episode, I just want to say once again, I uh, appreciate the acknowledgement and support for the book. That's out. All my supporters, listeners, and watchers and followers of this path, or those who find this path relevant and relative to their calling as well. Um, I still have books for sale and books on display and t-shirts for sale as well. The t-shirt by itself is $19.99. The book by itself is $19.99. To get it, you get it for $29.99, which is a $10 discount. There's a few copies left. Grab the few while you can. Um, yeah, before I start this episode, um, also want to thank uh, our creator of jewelry. Once again, you see the information on the bottom of the video. Our creator called Shania, who creates this copper or this rose quartz wrapped in copper. This was given to me spiritually, and this, which some of you may see a lot. That I wear certain times. It's a copper wrapped unk with crystals in the mirror in there. This was made by an entity spirit named Ma Jade. Or Ma Jade, Ma Jade. Um, her creation, her masculine creation, uh, Azazel or Azariah, transitioned or left his body recently um i just want to say uh much light to her and the family um and um i appreciate this because i came to her one day in harlem and i was like you know i want for some reason i was just i just wanted an unk and i'm like you know what i see people with unks i said but you know i see a lot of regular looking unks can you make something for me that Will be different, you know. I just want something different on me because my energy is different. Uh, you know, it's 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 its own thing. So whatever I wear, I want something that represents that same energy. I want it to be its own entity. I want it to be its own thing. And she said, "Okay, I got you, brother. Just come back um, on this date, whatever, and um, I'm gonna have something made for you." And I came back on the avenue with all of them. And it was as it was sitting next to his creation, and both creations are sitting next to each other. And I was like, oh, "How you doing, my J?" She said, "How you doing, brother?" Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I got that unk that you said you wanted, you requested, I made it for you. And I was like, "Oh, really?" And um, she had it. You know, she said, hey, "Here's what it is. Here's what the spirit came to me and said to make for you." And you know, it's here. I didn't even ask for the price. I just said. Matter of fact, I did. I just said, you know, all right, I want, I want that right now. I'm going to the ATM. What's the number? And she gave me the price, and I went there, purchased it, and uh, I had it ever since for years. So, my Jade, as is there, both creations, I just want to say thank you. Um, even though he's in spirit, I can still talk to him as well. You know, you can talk to spirit even while somebody's in the body. You don't have to wait till they leave their body. Like I said, you, some people die, some people leave the body. He or it left its body because he and it completed its mission. So just salamat, thank you for that. Um, so today's episode, today's topic, I was going to entitle it, at first I was going to entitle it, Is This the Death of Common Sense? consideration and communication. But I said, you know what, I'm not gonna type like that. I'm just gonna say and keep it regular as I usually do. So the title of this episode is, what is common sense, consideration and communication between two mates, between two partners? Um, of course, you know, I'm always touching upon principle based upon the, the aspect of relationship in the context of principle. Um, so yes, you know, and this came to me for some reason, unbeknownst to me in a certain way, but it was like, you know, 
Are we really talking to each other with a certain kind of balance? You know, both male and female, um, or both mates. Are they communicating to each other in a certain kind of mutual or neutral balance and energy? <clears throat> um, certain things came to my view. I witnessed a few different things. And certain notes came to me. And, of course, you know how I do. I write them down and I open them up on video and I channel whatever I channel in the moment, which is not written down. Um, so some things came to me and, I, you know, I look at communication. It's like, yeah, you know, yes, you know, we know how to talk to each other. But do we really know how to communicate with each other? And sit with that for a second. Yes, we know how to <clears throat> talk to each other. But do we really know how to communicate with each other? The key words are talk and communicate. The other key words are to, with. See, one is plural, the other one is, I guess you can say collective or <clears throat> union or unified. Um, a unification. So I can talk to you, you can talk to me, but are we actually communicating? And yes, communication is a principle, but there has to be certain things um, set up in place during a present conversation going on between two speakers, okay? <clears throat> Especially for a harmonic balance of communication with each other. I can talk to you, but it doesn't mean that, um, that we are communicating with each other. It's a difference. And um, I don't know, I guess the reason I received this this call in this light, this moment, <clears throat> um, I seen a lot of friction and conflict going on between two people who are in relationships or in a relationship or an intimate experience with each other, or an intimate relationship with each other. <clears throat> so that led me to touch upon, to name the topic of today and to touch upon the notes I will be touching upon in this specific video. Okay. So, once again, what is common sense, consideration, and communication? Once we have a principal understanding of these things, then things will flow a lot more harmonious, especially when we utilize it and actually apply it in who we're talking to each other to mature into a flow of communication, respectful communication of each other. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, you know, if you're not familiar with this channel, if you are, um, if you're not, I go line for line, which is what I say, doorway for doorway, and together through this understanding of principle, we both walk down this hallway. Okay. So let's go with the first thing, common sense, right? What is common sense? First of all, what is common sense? Let me make some examples. Questions that seek answers. Questions seek answers. It's common sense, right? Next thing is in order to reach destination, you need to travel distance. It's common sense. In order to walk, you first need to stand. It's common sense. In order to be heard, you also need to listen. It's common sense. In order to receive respect, you have to give respect. That's common sense. In order to look, you first have to see. It's common sense. <clears throat> In order to breathe, you need lungs. It's common sense. In order to see, you first have to be. 
It's common sense. To jump is to fall. It's common sense. If you jump up right now, you're going to fall back down. It's common sense. What is common sense? It's something that doesn't need a filling. It is what it is, as it is, and will always be that. Because that is the way that, because that is the intelligence that it is, that it displays itself as, that, re that it reveals itself to be. If I jump and I'm in mid-air, I'm not going to say, okay, let me chill up here for a little while. Okay, now I'm ready to fall. No, it's going to happen. So in a way, you can say cause and effect, action, reaction, if you want to put it in that way. This is what common sense is. Um, do we lack common sense, though, when we're talking to each other and having a conversation to hold a respectful platform of communication? In order to get along, you have to first go along. In order to get along, we have to first go along. But go along with what? With the sense which is common. With common sense. So in order to get along, you have to first go along. So first go along with the conversation as it lays itself out through the convert through the uh the come and go of question and answer answer and question and you have to be fair enough and responsible enough to be still and silent with your own rhetoric if you don't have a fair answer to a question being asked to you learn to be wrong learn to be incorrect learn to be okay with being unsure Always acknowledge and accept that fact and that possibility. Never be an extreme to only one side of a truth. Remain flexible within the stream of communication and conversation. See and accept where every genuine response takes you and takes itself. Learn to have faith in divine balance. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You know, um, when you're asked a question, answer it. If you have no answer for it, there's no need to respond back or try to, uh, put up a protective shield or to redirect it. You know, um, the question that's being a uh, asked to you, <clears throat> what is being asked to you? You know, um, you know, it's, it's kind of connected to, uh, you know, to deflect and neglect is to completely disrespect. To go off course is to navigate off source. To remain on course without discourse. You know, um, this is what keeps a nice flow of communication, which which how talking matures into the platform of communication or how the platform of talking matures into the broadcasting of communication. Okay. Um, stick to the body creation of the conversation. Follow up every question with a clear answer, short answer if possible to leave room for the other person to still get their point across, if needed. Especially if re respectfully requested by the questionnaire. So stick to the body of, stick to the body creation of the conversation. Follow up every question with a clear answer if you have an answer and a short answer if possible, as short as it can be. Especially if respectfully requested by the questionnaire. 
Keep a mutual tone and value when in response in order to remain silent within yourself because the more silent you are within yourself, the more you can figure out things quicker and more efficient and take respectful responsibility for your own destructive actions and imbalanced contributions. See, so <clears throat> keeping a mutual tone, of course, not yelling and screaming and going crazy, you know, remain stable to some degree. Remain just in the middle. Be this median point of yourself, within yourself. You know, um, it just keeps a conversation going. The talking is the initiation. And you want to reach the magic of communication. Now you're initiating, the talk is the initiation, the conversation is the invoking, and the communication is the actual entity or the actual energy which appears as a progression level or a maturity level of the foundation of talking to one another. Um, it's best to keep a mutual tone and value when in response to a question. But why? In order to remain silent within yourself, because if, if you're talking loud and yelling and screaming, how can you hear the sounds within your mind? How can you become it? How can you infuse with it? How can you embrace it? How can you respect it? If you're not even respecting the own silence in your mind, how can you respect any kind of uh, silence outside? Or, you know, um, if, if there's noise in your mind, then there's definitely going to be noise around you, but it doesn't mean that's noise that's being created around you. You can be the actual one creating the noise for yourself, within yourself. And you're keeping a mutual tone because you want that person also to have a clear, uh, you're supporting that person, the person you're talking to, your mate, to have a clear, quiet, silent mind as well so that they can respond and question and answer as well, as clear as possible, as centered and as stable as possible, and as sane as possible, which is important according to this path and this understanding. Um, you know, and like I said, the more you're silent within yourself and the more he's silent within himself or the more she's silent within herself, you're respecting silence, not just within you, but just as the principle of silence, because you know what grows from that soil of silence. Flowers of sanity, flowers of clarity, flowers of balance. So you're looking out for yourself, but you're also looking out for the other, the one that you say you care about, right? You said you care about him. You said you care about her. Where is care in the middle of conflict? It should still remain there. Conflict should never override the care that you have for somebody. And if it does, and that just shows how possessed that you truly are in that moment and how out of control you are overall. Where's the discipline? Um... Yeah, keep a mutual tone with yourself. The more silent you are, you can figure things out quicker. And you know, when you're in silence, you figure things out quicker. So wouldn't you want, even if something is in conflict and friction between you and that person in that moment, wouldn't you want them to figure out something as quick as possible to settle and subside the friction which is presently take, uh, taking place? Wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want health? Why wouldn't you want less friction or less conflict? in a interaction that you're having with your significant other, with your mate, with your husband, with your wife. Especially if they're one that actually supports um, your sanity or makes you feel happy. So in a way, your mate is like your food source. Why would you poison the soil of your food source, which you're ultimately going to have to return back to? How much sense does that make? Where's the common sense in that? Or because you couldn't control yourself or be disciplined enough. That shows how immature that you may be and how possessed you become and how quick you become in that possession and how stuck you become 
and anchored in that possession in that possession you know you have more of a possessive nature than more of uh a controlled nature and that's something that you have to ultimately check about yourself and within yourself silently alone in stillness not amongst other people who are emotionally or mentally connected to you or who you emotionally and mentally connected with because they may trigger even their happiness can trigger something about you if you're in that kind of state not just their madness but their happiness as well their balance can piss you off because you don't you see or you know that you don't possess those qualities but it's not to get mad at angry at and pissed off at extract some of that energy and that light that they're emanating outward take from it and make of it what you will but make sure whatever you make of it is something that's made that serves you not that you're reactively serving but something that serves you so that you can respond respectfully to the one that you say you care about or the one that you know uh supports or assists in your balancing of yourself within yourself and then you will see more improvements and enhancements of yourself within yourself when you're by yourself you see and you come back into the platform or the arena of relationship and then it's not the battleground is is uh it becomes less and less dormant and irrelevant you know you're going to have battles here and there because that's just the brain and the animalistic nature and the lower nature. But what overrides what? Does the lower nature override the higher aspect of you or does the higher aspect override the lower nature of you? See? So, you know, it's like, you know, are you looking up at the roof or are you, are you on the roof looking down at the ground? Where are you at? Um... <clears throat> under common sense, we're still under the title of common sense. Remember, this about what is common sense, consideration, and communication. Common sense, consideration, communication. We're still under the banner of common sense right now, okay? So under common sense, the next line in our doorway is logic, fairness, respect, and balance. That's common sense. Who in their right mind and wrong mind or mind period body period life period doesn't want or desire logic fairness respect and balance <clears throat> it's common sense these four things logic fairness respect and balance um in the form of talking conversating communication with your mate sustains healthy communication and develops communication skills and helps you or assists you to develop communication skills not communication ills skills not the ills these four things these four principles sustain healthy communication and develops within you communication skills <clears throat> or skills of communication and the result of this formula comes sanity and centeredness within self silence within self and to self and that alone brings about clarity and enhances awareness this is a constant practice So, to be in an intimate relationship, intimate just means connected emotional and mentally uh, to this individual more than others or in a rare and unique way than others, like family, things of that nature. Um, you decided to have somebody close to you that is emotionally and mentally tied to you within you because they are a creation of you like i said once again they don't exist on the outside they exist on the inside people once again they say well, what do you mean by that i don't understand Just explain that to me and i say well does your wife 
piss you off sometimes. Does your man throw you off your energy off sometimes? Can they influence that? Can they trigger something within you at times? Yeah. So where do they truly exist, outside you or within you? And this is always a question that people puzzle on for a minute. They just think for a second, they're like, all right. Uh, you, you know, using some trick words or some, or some trick knowledge on me, you know. And I'm like, no, I'm not. It's a regular question, right? Isn't that common sense as well? Can that maybe an example, maybe, probably, possibly an example of common sense? Like I said, she's your creation. He's your creation. A creation finds itself way, finds itself back to its creator. You created her, you created them. If they exist inside you, then you have a responsibility to maintain a center balanced state in that frame, in that moment, in that space and time, because that's actually going on within you. It's not going on outside the argument, the living room or the kitchen or the, the bedroom or yelling, screaming, arguing, walking down the street in the car. No, at a theater, there's no such place, there's no such distance, there's no such thing. They are in the orbit and in the cipher of you. You are in the orbit and a cipher together. You share an orbit and cipher, and cipher together, which is why you go places together, which is why you have things in common and all this other stuff. So all this is happening within the orbit of your nucleus, within the center of your nucleus. It's a union, right? You and her are a union. You and him are a union. Union is uni. Uni is uno. Uno is one. See? And the word ion is also in the word union. So uni ion, one ion, which means one thing which can actually have a negative charge or a positive charge, but it is an ionic field which you and her are sharing or which you and him are sharing. It's one field, it's one orbit, it's one cipher, it's one bubble, it's one circle, it's one cycle, which is why you can go psycho, which is why they exist in your psyche. And you can become sick if you have no control and discipline of your creation. You are a creator and don't even know what you're creating. This is why common sense, consideration, communication, all this saying is tie, tie in, tie in. Helix each other. Because you are helixed together. So if you know you're tied to something and that's your creation which actually resides within you, how are you going to treat that entity which you think is outside of you, amongst you, with you, around you? See, you have a responsibility. Yes, you have a responsibility. Especially in intimate relationships. Especially. <clears throat> um, okay, so the next line and or doorway is, why would you not want to be emotionally and mentally healthy and balanced and sane with a clear mind at any time and every time possible? Why would you not want to be that? Why would anyone not want to be that? At any time and every time possible. Who's going to say, no, I don't want to be that? I don't desire that. No, I don't want that. And truly, genuinely mean it. Who would say that? I'm listening. Who disagrees with what I'm saying? Or opposes? Once again, what is this? It's common sense. And if your path to get there, your way to get there is just by having some kind of self-control, at least start with some kind of inkling of self-control and discipline. Discipline is a private thing which you practice methods within yourself, by yourself. 
and self-control is a reflection or yeah, a projection of the reflection of discipline. Self-control is the action acting out as a result of self-discipline. <clears throat> discipline is private and personal. When you're by yourself, you do certain things. You practice on discipline of self to certain degrees by yourself in the privacy of your own space. And your self-control is the acting out of the discipline that you practice on your own time. So basically it's going back to what are you doing on your own time to better enhance a version of you which is in your favor and serves you both mentally and emotionally. We are in this body, the soma body, dealing with the somatic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, nerves, vibration, frequency in this wired vehicle that's full of plasma, fluid, bone, organs, organisms, things that are alive within you. This is your responsibility. You are a G.O.D., a generator and an operator and a destroyer. How are you keeping order and maintaining balance of the living things within you as a living thing yourself? This is your responsibility. You have employees. They live all inside you, inside this damn vehicle. How are you treating your employees? So also something to keep in mind in heart, Kima, K-I-M-A-H, which is something in the book as well. I told you, sections in here, it's called K-I-M-A-H, Kima, keep in mind in heart with certain met methods and practices that you're doing while you're doing it with your mates, but primarily within you, secondary in the atmosphere of your mate, okay? As you are, once again. Okay. Most importantly, as you are, as I am. The next line in our doorway is, common sense is to bring about a balance of mutual duality. To bring about, to bring about a balance of mutual duality. Well, what does this mean? With already knowing that we are opposing natures, but complementary and reflective natures, the focus and attention should never veer too far away from the potential of that obvious space expanding into a larger gap, knowing that that's a great possibility that can and may occur at any time it's given the possibility to do so. <clears throat> that awareness and responsibility should be taken on both on behalf of both parties. You and him or you and her. This responsibility should be taken upon both of you guys. Both of you creations. Both sexes, both fields of gender. Um, so basically what I mean by common sense brings about a balance of mutual duality. Mutual, of course, is just something that just is. It's just, it's just there. It's just something in a middle state. It's like fair balance. Duality is something that are on dual natures, it's opposing or reflections, reflective sides, what we call two people in a relationship, and man and woman, or male and female, masculine and feminine energy. Um, with already knowing that we are opposing natures, that I'm a man and you're a woman, or you know she's a woman and you're a man, with already knowing this <clears throat> as complementary and reflective natures, not really opposing because we're not opposite. We're complementary and we're, we're reflective um, creations of each other, natures. 
I'm saying the focus and attention should never veer should never veer too far away from the potential of that obvious gap expanding into a of that obvious space expanding into a larger gap. Being that we are two different sexes, that means that a space is present and that space can turn into a big gap. Because my nature is different from yours, even though it's complementing to yours and yours is complementing to mine, it's still different natures. And one's mind, focus, and attention should never ever According to this path, it wouldn't be wise. I wouldn't recommend you veer too far away from the potential of that obvious space expanding into a large gap. Um, um, because it's the principle that that gap is, you know, has a possibility that just knowing that space and that gap is there. It's, it's always a great possibility that that can and may occur at any time is given the possibility to do so. Because space is space, right? Space is out there. Gaps expand. Spaces expand. Gaps expand. So that's an intelligence within itself. That's a principle. And it's the intelligence within itself. Knowing that space can turn into a big gap. It's always something to keep in mind and never veer too far away from with your focus and attention of it, on it. So... This is why I say, you know, common sense brings about mutual duality. You're looking for the mutual intelligence within the presence of dual nature or duality. Because duality is always potential for space to turn into a gap. So you want to support the mutuality or you're trying to find the neutral uh, balance between you and her or between you and him. and Keeping that in mind and heart at all times, anytime and every time possible, because that space and that gap is there and it has the intelligence to expand when it wants to, when you guys ain't talking to each other. No, so, um, by the argument, you ain't talk for minutes, then hours go by, then days go by, then weeks go by, then months, months go by. No, and, um, that space, the intelligence of that space and that gap will get wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. Um, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. Because um, it can also be utilized as well in a different way of understanding, which is meant for conversation. Like I said, I'm going to turn this into a live stream while I'll be having uh, conversations with people one-on-one. -on -one. With people who bought the book, I also want to tell you too as well. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna hold the live stream for you guys that bought the book and are still buying the book and supporting this energy and this this light and the spirit moving forward. Um, for you guys, the ones who purchased the books, I'm gonna be holding. I'm gonna start holding live streams based upon certain sections of the book, and I'll be running down certain sections, and we will be building and conversating and communicating on certain points that are written inside the book together in that present moment. Okay, so this will turn into certain live streams at a certain time. It's, it's maturing into that on its own. So, I just wanted to say that, getting back to the program, common sense. Um, like I said, now with that awareness, just knowing that, pos that potential can turn into that possibility, never veer too far away from that possibly happening and that's a responsibility on both of you to keep in mind and heart okay the next line in the doorway is under common sense to support the natural unfold or the natural unravel to support the intelligence of nature or the intelligence of natural occurrence to sustain and remain a natural flow or free f or flowing of energy without force or discourse. This is common sense. To let that which is just be without, without voluntary emotional input. If emotion is happening within you, then you have to go within and address that before you verbalize it because we know once again it's a principle every thought seeks to become action every idea seeks to become an invention so every something that's being something that's 
in the mind is looking to be felt, which is why people verbalize things and scream and yell and curse and at each other because it's looking to turn into a a a a feeling a feeling on the inside wants to turn into a feeling on the outside or something that's held in mind that makes somebody aggravated wants to turn into a feeling that's why the ideas turn into invention inventions and that's why thoughts transform bridge over into action so we know there's always this crossing over effect going on and this is what we have to remain aware of as aware individuals dealing with the intelligence and understanding of principle okay um to be the be in order to follow the is in order to witness the as this is common sense when you're in common sense you're supporting the natural unfold or the natural unravel you're supporting the intelligence of nature or the intelligence of natural occurrence to sustain and remain a natural flow of flowing of energy without force or discourse once again this is within communication common sense inside of communication this is how things start to have or find its own flow its own flowing its own stream uh, and you just have to f just follow the communication follow the conversation communicate with each other respectfully talk to each other respectfully to have a nice flowing conversation to hold a respectful platform of communication with each other okay so as that happens and you see the natural unfolding of the conversation turning into or maturing or enhancing into communication what is real true communication authentic communication because other than that then you're just talking and you're just having a conversation but it doesn't mean that there is true communication flow <clears throat> communication deals with like respect of each other's space and orbit and each other's mind and perceptions um you know things of that nature okay next thing we're going to go into is consideration so we touched upon common sense now we're touching upon consideration <clears throat> what is consideration what do i mean by consideration remember i'm touching upon these three aspects um as something to keep in mind while you're holding a conversation with your mate or your significant other common sense consideration communication okay these are three points we're touching upon i'm going to touch upon consideration right now uh let me take this quick commercial break i'll be right back All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. I am back like another left. Okay, have these guys keep the company for a minute until I returned. All right, all right, let's get back to it. Now, 
What is consideration or what do I mean by consideration? Well, let's go through a little rundown. This is a little bit different. This is like a little rundown of what to consider when in communication with your mate during a potential or possible conflict that may mature into some kind of friction or an argument. Um, and um, certain things to keep in mind of each other, you know, especially if you say you care about each other and you care about him. Do you really care about him? Or you care about her? Do you really care about her? If you do, then listen to this rundown of things to keep in mind of each other when you see something about to get a little more heated. When the tension, you start to feel tension between what you guys are talking about in that moment. Keep this in mind of him and keep this in mind of her. Okay? <clears throat> Consider that the other may have had a bad dream or an ill-passing thought last night or that morning because you don't know. Consider she may be on her cycle. And you don't know just yet. Or maybe her cycle is coming in and her mood is changing. Her emotions are changing. Before you want to get out what you want to get out to her at that moment. Consider that. Keep in mind that. Consider that they may have received a call of bad news or a death in the family. Possibly. You don't know. When he returns back home or when she returns back home, you don't know what's on their mind, what's on their energy when they walk through that door, when they return back home at that very moment that you want to get some ill thought off of you. You have no idea what they just went through until they open their mouth and share with you how their day has went, how their day went up until that moment. Okay? Something to keep in mind and heart. Consider at that very moment, they may be trying to figure something out in that very moment you approach them with your ill energy approach. We may be in the middle of a thought trying to figure something out. And you can't wait till you see them to get some ill thought off your mind to put on them to have a potential argument with. But keep in mind that they may be, that person, the other one may be in the middle of a thought or something, trying to figure something out. All of a sudden, you just start yelling at him or yelling at her and screaming at her or whatever you're doing. Just things to consider. Because when you consider these things, you start to question or rethink your approach to them before you approach them with whatever you have on your mind or within your energy field at that moment. Consider that they may have been fired or might be let off when they walk through that door back inside the home. You don't know. You do not know what's on their mind and their emotions and their emotional body, what they're feeling. You have no idea about their day until you see them again during that day. You don't know what's going on. They may want to not say something to you because they're trying to figure something out, another plan to survive. And they may not want to approach you with that. They may be trying to figure something out on their own and have a solution rather than coming back home with the problem or seeing you again or approaching you again with the problem. We we have we have mind and mind is a very private, hidden, sacred thing that we all share, but we have our own little corner of it. And that's what keeps us us. You know? Um that's what keeps us us. And sometimes a person may be ashamed, they may be embarrassed, they may not, you know, their pride, whatever it may be, whatever they're going through within their self, may not let them, which is them holding their self back, but let's just say it may not be letting them communicate to you or talk to you about a certain problem or issue that they may be having or holding at that moment and then you just go and vomit. You're yelling and screaming at them. You don't know what space they're in. Respect the unknown. Consider that they may not be having the greatest day. Something to consider before you approach and open your mouth at them. 
before you approach them and open your mouth at them. If you want to ask, say, hey, uh, how's your day going? How are you feeling? What are you thinking? If you want to share with me. Learn to have respectful communication with your mate, your creation, the one who resides within you, the one who you are emotionally and mentally closest to and connected with. <clears throat> Be respectful. Use common sense. Consider these possibilities. Learn how to master communication. Consider that they themselves might be angry or frustrated in that very moment for whatever personal reason within their selves that has nothing to do with you. But if you approach them with your bullshit, then it is, it's going to have something to do with you now. Now you became a part of that mental mess that they're trying to shuffle out and filter out in their mind. You have just became a part of that madness which had nothing to do with you. You voluntarily became a part of it. By not simply asking a question to them. You lack common sense. You lack consideration. Therefore, there's no or a void of communication which you may have created or assisted with or you know, <clears throat> made happen, which wasn't happening prior to you making it happen. Um, consider they may be trying to become a better version of their self. Like I said, these are things to consider before you approach them and open your mouth at them to get off what you want to get off. Make sure there's this nice balanced state, a nice neutral state of existence, a nice or a mutual energy which is present before you get off whatever you have been thinking about or feeling that resides in the lower nature before you talk to them, have a conversation with them and begin to have, begin to hold communication with them or begin to communicate to them, with them or express to them or display to them. They may not be in that space. They may have came from just a whole bunch of noise and just may want to come home and be in silence. He or she. Okay? Either me. <clears throat> Consider the fact that they're running their own business and need a peace of mind at all times possible to figure out solutions for their problems. Especially if somebody is, you know, um, has their own business, whether she has her own business or he has his own business. <clears throat> and that business is also a business which supports you as well or assists in supporting you or assists in the survival of him or her and y'all together overall. Why wouldn't you want to support that with just a little self-control, discipline, respect, common sense, consideration, and a nice flowing form of communication. Have some self-control, have some discipline, have some balance within you. Remain centered. Learn how to master communication, become a master of communication. Master communication or begin mastering communication. Practice how to communicate respectfully with your mate in a respectful, neutral space of existence. Okay? You know, they may just want silence in that moment. Consider that they may want silence in that moment when they walk in or when you see them in the car, when you come in the car, when they pick you up or from wherever you're at, family, store, wherever, whatever, however, whenever. You do not know 
the space and place that individual was in when you see them again. Like I said, some are more quiet, silent, private, and personal than others. You don't know your mate. You don't know your creation. Personality-wise, identity, behavior, you do not know your creation. Yes, you guys are connected through correspondence and the understanding of creation that you created each other. But what makes that individual is the individual. What individualizes that is their own personality, their own creative personality that they have, that they created on their own individual experience before you created them out of you. Yes, there was an energy in you at one time, a need, want, desire, fantasy, but that energy turned into that entity. Energy turns into entity. Thought seeks to become action. Ideas seek to become an invention. See, nothing is something. Nothing turns into something. But the only thing that separates that the creation, the creative from its creation, is individualized experiences and personalities. You do not know that person. You do not know that part of your creation. Give your creation at least that much and respect that line. Don't cross that line. You know, behave in a respectful manner around them, towards them, and with them. For them, and most importantly, for you as well. You know, the more you not promote the friction, the more friction doesn't return back to you. Okay? Only, like I said, the only way you can be, or the only way you can see is if you be. Only way you can see peace is if you be peace, full. Okay? <clears throat> you get what you give. Consider the possibility that they may lack self-control and discipline of their own destructive habits and actions. They may not be as controlled and as disciplined as you are. It's a possibility they may not be. Maybe you have more control and discipline that they do than they do. That's possible. But you just don't know. It's unknown. You can never know. Because that's something that is private within oneself. It has nothing to do with you. And you can never know that. So, you know, once again, like I said, consider the possibility that they may lack self-control and discipline of their own destructive habits and actions. This should keep you on your toes. This should keep you sharp and aware. Yes, they're your creation, but they're just another individual when it comes to the understanding of personality and that which they have created for themselves or that which was created for them and that whatever was created for them from their parents growing up and reared, you know, um, how they were reared and brought up, they create on that something of their self, which has nothing to do with you and your personality, totally different. Keep in mind and heart of that. Be mindful of that. Be respectful of that. And it's not you're respecting them as well, but you're also respecting yourself. You're, you're, you're making sure you remain sane, centered, balanced, and clear as well. So whatever you're exposing or billboarding, you're also promoting for yourself as well. Get what you give. And maybe what you get may, be, may not be to the extreme of what you gave it may be worse why even take that chance why even roll those dice why even take that risk when all you had to have was self-control discipline and balance and sentence and silence and stillness and a long time before you approach them and verbalize something to them okay Consider the possibility that you may be putting yourself in danger by losing your cool around them. Hmm. That kind of relates to what I was just talking about. 
there is a possibility that you may be putting yourself in danger. You don't know what's on that person's mind. You don't know what kind of shit he's been through before he's seen you again. You don't know what kind of shit that she went through before she approached you. This is human nature, animalistic nature. The ego always loves to come out and play. Always, whenever it sees an opportunity available. And the only opportunities that it sees when it's available is when a person lacks awareness and respect, common sense and consideration. When these things are absent, the ego comes out to play immediately. Immediately, automatically, simultaneously, as a matter of fact. Because that's his only opportunity to live and thrive within you, through you, as you. Okay? And then you're possessed now, and you're stuck within yourself, within that possession, that present possession. <clears throat> Consider the possibility that they may not have patience. Or they may lack less patience than you do. And this goes especially for those individuals who are what we call older. If a man is older than a woman or a woman is older than a man, and the younger one of the mate um, approaches the older one with their anger, frustration and voices it in high tones and value don't necessarily expect patience from that older individual because it's something that comes with age as well as wisdom there's also less patience for nonsense older people have less patience for things that they were more patient about when they were younger it's something that comes with the aging of the body, not the aging of the spirit. There's no such thing as spirit doesn't age. But there's something that comes with the toleration or intoleration or enduring or endurance or bearing of the body and its threshold. It becomes less patient for things. Now, it's not saying that it becomes less patient, so it just spins out of control. No, it just becomes less patient for things that aren't beneficial to it, or serving its uh, life in a certain way, because there's certain chemicals that go on within the body that become absent or dormant <clears throat> later on in the body aging experience that they had at one time when they were in junior high school or high school. Um, it's just a natural phenomenon that occurs within the uniform and vehicle of the body or the embodiment. Okay, something to keep in mind for you younger, mates who are younger than your older significant other, okay? Who are younger than your significant other, pardon me. Consider yourself your health, your sanity, and your own balance. Consider that. First, I want my health. I appreciate my sanity, and I would like to be as balanced as possible whenever possible. So that should be always in mind and heart before you approach them and voice what you want to voice to them. If you want to remain that, then you dish that. You want to receive that, and you deliver that. You want to be sane and clear and centered within yourself. That's most important. That's primary. That's prime. Your start, that's the starting point. Your finish should be no different than your start should come back full circle okay and even if it doesn't come back full circle you remain balanced and they don't why be in balance because they're in balance remain balanced if it's the other way around remain balanced 
Because if their imbalance, their possession throws you off of your moment, of your awareness, then where were you really to begin with? Is your awareness just an act? Is your balance just fake, phony, not real? Then you have to deal with that within yourself. Why even put yourself through that trial, through that internal trial, that mental trial within yourself? Self-judgment, things of that nature that you're going to have to deal with on your own by yourself without them, when you're not with them, alone. Why set that up and put yourself through that? That's not common sense, but this is consideration we're talking about. But that's not common sense to do that, right? <clears throat> Consider all the things that they do for you and for the experience that you two share. Keep considering these things. Have these things in mind. Have consideration of them and what they do for you and for y'all. And for the experience that you guys share. Especially if you appreciate what they have done and you still appreciate what they're doing. Keep that in mind before you want to get your ego off on them. Before you, you know, even if you're triggered somewhere emotionally, make sure you approach them in respectful dialogue. Talk to them with respect, not only of them, but of yourself. Respect yourself and approach them with respect and having respect for them so that they may also learn from that and respect their self. See, so you're not only playing and displaying, but you're also promoting and influencing them to be as you are. If you are that internally, truthfully, genuinely, honestly within yourself, if you're really that, okay? Um, consider the possibility that they may have a headache or a migraine or may not be feeling too well at that moment that you approach them with your ill energy and your ill thoughts. What about they walk in the house or walk in the car or come in the car or you meet them at the mall or the supermarket and you just start yelling and screaming, you, you know, at them. How do you know that he doesn't have a headache at that moment or maybe he's feeling sick or ill? How do you know that she may not have a migraine or a headache and may be feeling ill or sick at that moment? That you just approached her, ran up to her, started screaming and yelling at her. How do you know? How do you know? These are things to consider and factor in once again before you approach and voice whatever you want to voice out towards them. That's another thing. I wouldn't recommend you talk towards them. Talk to them. Because towards is like force. It's like war. Battle. Learn how to talk to your mates. Not talk towards them or at them. Towards and at should be canceled. Two should be the main point of focus and attention according to this path. Well, but do as you will. Okay? When you find yourself in a certain kind of predicament situation, I don't say that you ain't watch this video. <laughs> or you ain't have a chance to apply it without the video, without this video, period in life. To just have some control, discipline, self-awareness, respect for another's orbit, considerate of them, you know, use some common sense. That's just natural principles of life. But if you're not privy to it, if you're not privileged to gain that or to earn that or to see that or be aware of that or acknowledge those principles and actually utilize them and apply them for the benefit of serving you. You know what I mean? Then you fucked. <laughs> oh, you may have a second chance and a second dance and a second glance. Maybe, possibly, probably to reset and reboot. Before you think to reshoot. Okay. Um, 
Consider the possibility that pardon me, consider the possibility that their age and wisdom may override your current younger experience and knowledge. So once again for all the younger mates who are involved with older mates. A wife, a younger wife who may have an older husband or a younger husband who may have an older wife. Understand, consider the possibility that their age and wisdom may override your current younger experience and knowledge. Like if someone is 10 years, 10 solar cycles, 10 revolutions ahead of you, which is actually before you or prior to you. They may see things and know things in a certain sense that you cannot see and know at this very moment. And just like we all are on this path and on this calling and we learn from our elders, right? We call them elders, right? Because they have a certain kind of spark of wisdom, a kind of way of seeing ahead of us, which is actually before us, that we may not be able to see and be in that very moment between space and time that we find ourselves in as the younger, the younger creation amongst our older creation. No like your mother, like your father, like your grandmother or your grandparent. You go to these individuals for wisdom or clarity of what you may not see at that moment, but they have seen it according to their own experience, their own personal thing, according to how they navigated with their own personality. But still in all, if you're going to them with a certain kind of topic that they also touched upon and may have came across in their life, you're going to them for that wisdom. Learn to respect your elder. And your elder can be your husband. Your elder can be your wife. But certain people have certain backgrounds where they have no knowledge or no experience with respecting an elder energy, an older person. Can I understand? I get that. But those who did, act like you know. Just because he may look young and be healthy and he may look young, younger than you, he may be fit, she may be young, she may look younger than you. Your wife that's older may be, look younger than you. May be fit, you know, in a youthful state of existence. But it doesn't mean that they're your age. They still, they were here before you were here in the body, in this present body. You have to look at them through a different scope. You have to respect them through a different lens. You have to approach them with a different energy and persona. I mean, it's only right. It's only light. In a second. Let me get this uh, recharger. It's my little phone. It's going out a little bit. Let me recharge this damn thing. <clears throat> okay. Next. Consider the fact that they may have a totally different perception of life and how to function and operate with their own perception. According to their own perception. Pardon me. Consider the possibility of that, because that may be a fact. Okay. Um, okay. 
consider that. <clears throat> that they may have their own perception. Um, and they have a totally different perception of life and how to function and operate through life than you do. You know, just because they're your creation and you created them doesn't mean that they perceive, think, and act like you and live like you. Okay? Keep this in mind and heart as you continue your experience with them before you approach them and voice whatever the, you feel like voicing to them, not towards them or at them. Um, and that's pretty much <clears throat> for that line right there. Okay. They have a different perception. They perceive things differently from you. Because they're not you. They're your creation, but they're not you. Specifically, individually. Okay? Consider the possibility that your one may be their ten. And your ten may be their one. Meaning what? Meaning what you may not take so personal or find as a big deal. They may take extremely personal and find as a big deal. And vice versa. You may say, that's not a big deal. You know, it's, it's, you took that personal like that? It's not even that serious. And they're saying, well, that shit is extremely serious to me. How dare you? Your one may be their 10, extreme. Your 10 may be their one, less extreme. You do not know, have respect for the unknown within yourself, within this phenomenon we call life and within them. This is the beauty of it. You just don't know. And you will never know. So just you not knowing and will never know, that should create some kind of humbleness within you. You should be humble to that to some degree. You should have some kind of unquestionable respect for you, for them, and what you share with them. And what they share with you. And what y'all are creating together, collectively. Where is respect for the unknown? within you, within them, and within what you're sharing and you're creating. Where is the respect? Where is the humbleness within you? Where is the centeredness? <clears throat> um, consider the fact that they're a specific program just like you. We're all programs. We've been programmed a certain way. So we're all different programs. Have respect for their program, just like you have a program and you know your program. And just knowing how challenging it may be for you to come out of one program and into another. Meaning, how you can get pissed off and how difficult or challenging it is for you to get back to a sane, stout, balanced state of some kind of joy. Just knowing that challenge of that conversion from one state to the other, be knowledgeable and have respect of their program. Because their program may not be as easy flowing as yours is. So I'm saying? Because they were programmed just like you were all programmed to some degree. Okay? Consider the principles of privacy, silence, space, and faith. Consider the principles of privacy. Silence, space, and faith. Um, privacy, silence, space. You want to respect their privacy like you respect your privacy. If you want silence, give them silence or be as silent as possible, especially when you're in an ill state. Um, the principle of space. There is space. There's always space. Be knowledgeable of space because that space can expand into a large gap, like I said before. And have faith. Faith has nothing to do with religion. I have nothing against religion, but it has nothing to do with religion. A lot of people tie faith to religion. No. Faith is just, once again, 
being acknowledgeable and having respect for the intelligence of what is unknown. And just know that things will pan out in your favor of benefit to you and will in some way ultimately serve you. Not them serving you or he serving you or she serving you, but energy and experience itself will serve you in the right or the preferred direction. Or a direction which is of benefit to your purpose, to your mission, to your spiritual task here. Nothing here is against you. Everything is for you. Okay? Another way of understanding. Nothing here is against you. I don't, I don't care what it is. Poison, illness, sickness, venom. Anything and everything is for you. Because anything and everything has a ionic field or contains ions, which means it contains a positive charge and contains a potential negative charge. This is why every poison is used as a medicinal and too much medicine can turn into a poisonous state of vibration. Too much of something is not recommended. I don't care if it's the greatest thing for you or the worst thing for you. Too much of it. Everything comes in respectful moderation, which is the same thing in communication, which has to do with consideration, which is the epitome of common sense. Okay? Consider the possibility that they're a parent and may be in teaching mode subconsciously in conversation when they're talking to you, don't take a personal, take a principle. That was actually going to be the subtitle of the book before one time. Don't take a personal, take a principle. Um, yeah, especially if you're a woman and your man uh, is a father or has a son or has a daughter or has children or has both. Keep in mind that when he's talking to you, he's not actually doing it consciously if he has no kind of ill ways about him that's really doing that to you you know and triggering you and nagging you to a certain degree you know uh, irritating you on purpose if he's genuinely coming at you in a certain way he's coming at you and talking to you in a certain way but understand that he's a parent so subconsciously, he may talk to you like you're his child. But even if you think about this ancestrally or ancestral, then according to ancestral technology, a woman has a child with the man because through her son, she always wants to see her husband. Through his wife, he sees the eyes of his daughter. Just to keep that in mind before I go on further. So he may be talking to you as a teacher or as a parent or as a father. You don't want Spanish people, you know what I'm saying? What does what the woman call, the wife call her man? Papi. What does the man call his wife? Mommy. As if they are children to each other, but they are adults to each other, but they are mates. They are connected to each other. And they know their husband and wife, what they call each other, mommy and papi. Why? There's an ancient science to that. They were a child to each other. Once again, certain things to keep in mind. Let's go back to the point of focus that I was touching upon, though. He may be talking to you in a way that, as the same way he talks to his son or his daughter, because he is a father, he is a parent. You may not be that at that moment. Or she may be talking to you in a certain way, like a parent, but don't take it as she's talking down to me or he's talking down to me like I'm dumb. Keep in mind if they're a parent and they may be talking to you in a certain way that they may not even be conscious of at that very moment because they're used to being a parent. Or they may be an older brother or an older sister that was used to talking down to their younger siblings. 
and they may not have mastered that with you just yet. Because remember, we're subconscious. As much as we're conscious, we do everything subconscious. You learn to tie sneakers when you were young, brush your teeth, comb your hair, brush your hair, take a shower. These are all subconscious things. So we still do it to this day. And we do it sometimes without even knowing that we're doing it in that moment that it's being done. See, so this is why I say don't take a personal. Take a principle. Have common sense. Consider that you may be wrong. Or you consider or factor in another way of approaching them. Or approaching the situation at hand. These are all things to keep in mind and heart. All things to consider and factor in before the approach happens. And the verbalizing begins. To them. Not towards them and at them. No. That's not how communication. That's not something that assists in the production, development, and growth of communication. Okay? Consider the fact that you have absolutely no idea what's going on within them, in both their body and their mind. At that very moment, you approach them with your ill energy. Once again, I kind of touched upon this before, but you kind of you know where I'm coming from already. Y'all yeah, should know my now where the hell I'm coming from. Okay. Once again, the respect of the unknown. Have faith in silence, non-reaction, and non-response. Have faith in silence, non-reaction. And non response. You respond when you're aware and have control. You react when you're out of control and are emotional. It's a difference. But have faith in silence. Sometimes, even if you know or feel that you're right, and you know that they know that you're right, don't say shit. Learn to say nothing. Learn that. Practice. You have, you're in an intimate relationship. You're in the, the greatest arena. You're in the greatest stadium to practice these spiritual principles. You're in the greatest arena. You're in the greatest playground. A relationship, an, an intimate relationship is the greatest platform to practice these methods within yourself. There is nothing greater because nobody else can trigger you to that degree. The one creation that you keep emotionally or that which is emotionally and mentally connected to you or within you. That has the greatest effect or may possess the greatest effect and influence on you and within you to turn you from A to B, from positive to negative. This is the greatest, the greatest class you could ever be in, an intimate relationship. <laughs> it's the greatest class you could ever be in. Be thankful that you're in that class and that you created that class for yourself. They exist so-called outside of you to activate something within you. Okay. They're a projected energy as a reflective energy. They're a projected entity as a reflective energy within you. Hmm? You created them. Take responsibility as a creator for your own creation. Consider the knowledge of each other's nature. Man is not woman. Woman is not man. Masculine is not feminine. Feminine is not masculine. When you come to biological understanding and chemicals and chemistry, yes, a woman is part her father and a man is part his mother. But the end result is what 
did they come out with between their legs and on their chest? Right? Isn't it about the end result? So if one came out with penis and testicles and the other one came out with a vagina and ovaries, the biology has a direct connection to the psychology and the overall uh, governing of chemistry of that organism and influence of that organism. Just like she can get pregnant and he can't. Difference. He puts intelligence in front of his emotion. She puts her emotion in front of her intelligence. But this doesn't mean to stay emotional over your intelligence. This doesn't mean to stay intelligent over your emotion. Sir, ma'am. This means to find the balance in both within yourself individually before you come together collectively as one union one shared experience in agreement and in contract with each other. Physical agreement and spiritual contract with each other. Become a master <clears throat> of that. Okay? To some degree, you'll start mastering it or practicing it. The last thing in consideration is be considerate, respectful, and open to their age wisdom, whether they're older or younger than you. Most likely if they're older than you, though, because generally speaking, they may possess less patience for potential conflict and friction. I touched upon that already. And you should already understand what the hell I was touching upon before. Okay? And if you didn't rewind this, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And now, last but not least... Communication. So, we touched upon common sense, consideration. Now we're touching upon the last trifecta, which is communication. So we're bringing communication over. Now communication is what I'm going to be talking about. Common sense and consideration we touched upon. So now we bring communication. So now I'm going to talk about just a few principles, it's not long at all, about communication or things to keep in mind based upon communication or to have to hold communication with you and your mates or to have a respectful or once it's of respect of common sense and awareness and acknowledgement of common sense and consideration and respect, then it turns automatically or transforms into what we know as communication. Because like I said, once again, in the beginning, you can talk to her, you can talk to him, but y'all just talking and maybe holding a conversation. But that doesn't mean that you two are in a respectful field of communication. Communication is the result of a maturing, deriving from the platform of respect, neutrality, <clears throat> balance. Mutual dialogue. Okay. Communication. To communicate is to be a community. A community begins with only two people. This is how a community begins. Two people. Not a town, not a city, not houses, not families. Not crowds, population of people, no. A community means two people. Come unity. Come into unity. When something unites, one has to be another one to come into unity with. Come unity. It's two people. It's not a neighborhood. It's not an area. It's not a city. It's not a town. It's not a continent. It's not a country. It's not a state. It has nothing to do with anything. <clears throat> Community is a private and personal understanding between 
two individuals or two creations or creator and creation, creation and creator. This is what community means. To communicate is to be a community. A community begins with only two people. <clears throat> but there's no community without two people being civil enough to commune with each other within a respectful, harmonious rhythm. To commune is to come one or to come united as self first and then with another. Why? In order to get balance. And in order to get balance, you have to first be balance. Once again, in order to see, you have to be. If you want to see what balance is, then you have to be what balance is. Um, to communicate is to be a community, but there is no community without two people being civil enough to commune with each other. Come yun, come space yun, to come as one, as yun, uni, you know, uno, one, <clears throat> to come as one as you individually, and then together with your creation, or with another, or with the other. This is very relevant towards the understanding or the metaphysical understanding of what communication is. And even if you take the word cation away from communi, the word communication, and you take communi, out and cation, the word cation means a positively charged ion. What does that mean? A positive charged ion is a gatherer. It gathers things around its cipher, around its ionic field, which means you're gathering something, which is why commune and community is a gathering. You create and then you pull back to you what you've created to gather around you, your wife or your husband, your creation. So it's a positively charged ion. Communication is to become one gatherer, to become one for the gathering. The gathering of what and who? Your mate, your reflection, your projection, your significant other, your creation. Right, Frankenstein went back to his creator and destroyed him. It's the same damn thing. Your creation is going to come and return back to the creator, but for what? For a balance within you? Ideally. But do you know that? Do you acknowledge that truth? Are you aware of that truth? It's a whole other question and answer. A whole other Q&A. Next line in the doorway is, under communication, <clears throat> have a mutual meeting ground when disagreements and different views and different perceptions start to become a shouting match during a conversation. And a reset button when the yelling, screaming, and shouting match begins. So what the hell do I mean by this? <clears throat> You have to have a mutual meeting ground. Resort back to the things you two share and have in common, which is the common sense. Having things in common, common sense, something that comes together without you even knowing. You're like, oh, I like this movie. I always like that movie. She's like, oh, wow, I always like that movie too. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. It's like, okay, I guess we have that in common. So it's something, it's an intelligence which, which comes together on its own. Common sense, things in common. Common sense, things in common. Common sense. Something that has a natural flow, has an intelligent flow all on its own that doesn't need any of your mental input at all. Nothing from you. It has its own flow if you just know how to take your thoughts 
your ill energy, your lower nature, and the molistic nature, your ego, out of the equation. It has its flow. Let it flow. Common sense, consideration, communication. Back to schedule program. Let me say this one more time. You have to have a mutual meeting ground. What is the mutual meeting ground? What do you mean by a mutual meeting ground? Resort back to the things you two share and have in common. And this is only when potential conflict begins to happen in disagreement and argument. Resort back to the things which you two have in common, which is the common sense. When disagreements and different views and different perceptions start to become a shouting match during a conversation. And you have to have, or it's recommended to have, a reset button to reset and replay the special, rare, and unique moments you two share together at one time when the yelling, screaming, and shouting match begins. So you have to have, I would, I would recommend and suggest every couple, every union, every creation and creator, every creator and creation, every projection and reflection, every reflection and projection and unified and unification with each other have two things, mutual meeting ground and a reset button. If you two have enough control, self-control, discipline, awareness, care, consideration, balance, centeredness, silence, stillness, fairness, individually and then with each other to actually resort back to these safe havens for the continuation of a divine union that you two share, then you two won't go anywhere. You will be together for a very long time, if not until you leave the body together. Because you have that control and self-discipline, self-control and discipline, you have that balance sense, and as you are aware, you create, or you have already created a mutual meeting ground. You already have things in common. And you have accepted the reset button when you say, you know what, I'm pissed off at you. Well, I'm pissed off at you. And you say, well, let's just resort back to the time where we were happy with each other. We were balanced with each other. And I, I can't believe I actually am with you. She's like, you know what, I can't believe I'm actually with you. Yeah, I remember that moment when I, when I, first, when I first thought that in my head. And you were both excited to see each other. Do you remember that day? Do you remember that moment? You remember what you had on? You remember where you was at? You remember what you were thinking? Do you remember how you were feeling? These things are created so that you can jump back into them whenever needed, desired, and or required for whatever reason by you. According to the situation at hand and the circumstances which unfold that you feel a need, want, or desire to return back to that to reset. It's cool when one of you know how to do that. But it's mad fun when both of y'all know how to do that shit. It's like an adventure. It's no longer a relationship to that degree. It's an experience and a, a spiritual experience and a divine adventure. When both of you possess, harness, and utilize these spiritual qualities and principles and actually put it into action to engulf yourself in the results of it. This is a magical place. We are magical things. Your life is an anomaly. Your existence is an anomaly. Your experience is a phenomenon. Nothing can truly, 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 truly be explained to that degree. Enjoy the magic for what it is.
Know when to be a magician, when to utilize your magic, how to manipulate ele elements and forces when you need to and want to and desire to or require to for whatever reason. Okay? Never fear too far from that. Okay. Um, next line of doorway is... <clears throat> Metaphysically, the word communication means to be a part of a collective intake or to be a part of and take in, meaning seeking to be conjoined with something. Commune is to come one or come as one. I is self and cation is a positively, positively charged ion. I went through that kind of before just now, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> So you're communicating to become one thing, to become one thing. You and her are communicating to become one thing. You and him are communicating or seek communication to become one thing, one monad, one, yeah, one thing. I'm not going to search for all the crazy words because it's just that damn simple. That's the mission. That's the task at hand. <clears throat> That's the point. Um, the next line in the doorway is the creation of a mutual bridge. Communication is the creation of a mutual bridge or middle bridging between two sides or two islands or two islands. Because two islands is two islands. So it's a bridging between two sides, a bridging between two islands, a bridging between two eye lenses or eye lens, your eye lens and his eye lens, a bridging. Are you mature enough willing to, are you mature enough and are willing to put aside the emotionally destructive reactions that constantly destroy the construction or constructing flow of communication of a bridge or bridging trying to manifest itself in the presence of two talkers talking conversating communication it's the point uh, it is an example of principle trying to reveal its existence in the middle of two personal Experiences trying to share one divine experience. There's an intelligence there, as you can see. It's there on its own. It exists on its own. Let it be. How do I do that? Have common sense and consideration to turn the talking to conversating into the mature form of communication. Okay? <clears throat> There's a bridge. That's what communicating is. You created when you when you two are communicating or are within communication, you have just created a bridge or a bridging. So you want to create bridges, not burn bridges. That's not the point of this path. That's not the progress of this specific calling. Like they say, don't burn bridges. Well, if they're saying don't burn bridges, then what are they saying? What are they implying to create bridges? So that you can walk or travel across that bridge anytime you want and vice versa with them. They're giving them a bridge to travel across to get to you and through you. What about wheels on foot? Whatever form of transportation, uh, metaphorically speaking, that you use to get across to each other. But create the bridge. If the bridge is there, the travel is not even the question. There's, there's no thought to it. You can travel. But if no bridge is there, how do you travel from one side to the other? Just create the bridge. Let the traveling travel on its own. It'll travel. It's just waiting for you to create the bridge or the bridging effect between you and your mates. Okay? 
Next line of doorway is always look to build bridges between you and your mates and be aware of the natural free flowing connections and the challenging connections between you and your mate or you and your creation. Take note of each analysis in separate categories with equal attention to both categories and respect for both forms of existence and both experiences. I'm just going to kind of touch upon this. Always be, always look to build bridges between you and your mate, which is once again a free flowing, neutral flow of communication. Respectful, respect progresses into maturity. Hmm? So, always look to create that bridge or bridges between you and your mate. Always look to how can I master communication with them? How can I master communication with her? By first, for like this, since we're both, since we're all primarily personal, private, and individual, if you want to say to that, if I was, if I was entertained at the moment, you have to first master your internal dialogue in your mind. Self judgment, you know, demeaning things you call yourself or feel that you are at that moment at them because of them because they don't make you mad you just go mad they don't make you angry anger is just amongst you you have to start speaking in this language to understand the metaphysical point of views i'm not angry the energy of anger is amongst me i'm not mad the energy of madness is amongst me And once you start speaking in this kind of language, because remember, language to what you speak, the language that you speak is the very thing which changes or shifts your perception, which creates your truth on the grounds of this reality. You get to create your own truth. Why not create your own truth? Why not Frankenstein yourself? to a being that you, that serves you, and that you find of, that's beneficial to you, and your purpose, or your goal, or your task, or your mission. <clears throat> Why create something that is you, against you? So, to master com verbal communication, you first have to address the mental dialogue that which you verbalize is a projection and reflection of that which is internalized so you have to address and confront that voice or those that same dialogue those same statements those same quotes that same rhetoric that you keep cycling in your mind with different people is the same damn quotes, the same statements, the same paragraphs, the same questions, the same turmoil you with different individuals. What does that tell you about the voice or the dialogue in your mind? Is it real? If it's real, why doesn't it have why doesn't it contain different dialogue with different questions and different judges and different judgments and different discriminations with different people. It's the same thing cycling over and over again with different people. If every person is rare and unique, how can the same dialogue be going on with different individuals who are rare and unique to their self, by their self? See, this is where awareness comes in. You ask that, you question that. You say to your mind in the mental dialogue, you're not real. Oh, shit, I get it. You're not real. And then when you leave something alone, you leave people alone, you leave your mate alone, you leave them, or you divorce them, or you split from them, and that voice in your head, you think it's going to be you and that voice and that mental dialogue, and all of a sudden, that dialogue disappears and leaves your ass by yourself. You thought you had a friend. 
You know, so these are certain things to be aware of. Okay? So things to be aware of. It's not good or bad, it's just things to be aware of, okay? But according to this pattern, this calling certain things are of relevant utilization and others can be disposed of. The last line and doorway of communication is to create a dimension of the communicative scene during interaction. So nothing remains hidden or questionable during conversation or converse. To see all as it is and follow the trail which is currently creating itself <clears throat> outside of one's prerogative of choice and decision. To redirect and re-navigate the conversation elsewhere. Scene during interaction. To create a dimension of the communicative scene during interaction so nothing remains hidden or questionable during a conversation. See, all that is follow the trail. This is basically saying just follow the trail of what the communication is, how how the conversation is going without your mental input, your emotional input, uh, the judgment, discrimination, uh, holding past crap, you know, um, see it for what it is as it is in that very moment and accept it for what it is. Follow it because conversating, talking, conversating, it's, it's creating a path, it's creating a trail. It's a creating path or a creating trail, creating itself. Follow that path respectfully with self-control, discipline, awareness, center, balance, stillness, silence, respect. Follow it where it goes. If somebody asks you a question, answer it back as short as possible, especially if they say, well, just say yes or no. I don't say yeah, but only because I don't say, well, no, because try to keep it short and respectful because if they have a point, if he has a point or she has a point and you feel wrong or incorrect or unsure, don't fight the wrong incorrection or unsurety about what you have just been proven otherwise about. Accept it. Accept your loss. Just as much as you accept your wins, accept your loss. And be humble about the loss that you have accepted. Be humble that you may look like an idiot. Be humble feeling like a fool. Be humble looking stupid. If that's what you call these things. Because it humbles you to a whole nother degree when you're alone in silence and stillness with yourself. It brings about a certain kind of clarity. It sprouts sanity within you. It's just a natural intelligent phenomenon that happens on its own and progresses and develops on its own. It grows on its own within you that you will come to see once you begin to be. But you will not see until you begin to be. There's nowhere for you to stay until you begin to play. Okay. Um, this is something I want you guys to keep in mind in Hakima, K I M E H. Um, when dealing with certain conflicts and friction between you and your mates, understand the intelligence of elements or elemental nature. Elements, you know, the four elements fire, air, earth, and water. Fire, air, earth, and water. Fire, air, earth, water. Right, we come out, oh, I'm Taurus, or oh, I'm a Capricorn, or oh, I'm Sagittarius, or oh, I'm, you know, Aries, or oh, I'm. Yes, these signs come with certain kind of elements attached to them if you were to uh, deal with astrology, um, and also certain kind of natures of cosmology, things of that nature. But understandings of that nature, I want to say this to y'all is know and utilize the principle of elemental cancellation. What this is going to do is it's going to assist you, it's going to help you to be an element at certain times when your mate may be 
or your significant other may be projecting a certain kind of element at one time um, within interaction and conversation that you become wise to and may cancel that element which they are acting out in that moment for the benefit of the conversation, the benefit of you and the benefit of them and the benefit of what you guys share to keep that experience in respectful continuation. Okay, so it's something that I coined that I call elemental cancellation. Um, know and utilize the principle of elemental cancellation. Know and utilize the principle of elemental cancellation. What the hell do I mean by this? Which is just to have a knowledge of the four elements, to know which of the four elements cancel out the other, and most importantly, to utilize the canceling out method when needed, desired, or required. Once, uh, once again, one more time. Elemental cancellation is just to have a knowledge of the four elements to know which of the four elements cancel out the other and most importantly to utilize the canceling out method when needed, desired, and or required by you for the situation. You have elements that get canceled out by other elements. And then you have elements that cancel out other elements. One side is elements that cancel out other elements or put out other elements. And the other side are elements that cancel out other elements. Okay. So when I looked at elements that get canceled out, fire, air, earth, and water, right? I started with fire. Fire can get canceled out by air. If you blow it away, you can blow a fire out. Fire can get canceled out by water. If water is put on fire, fire becomes canceled out. Fire can also get canceled out by earth. If you put a certain amount of dirt or soil or earth on top of fire, the fire gets put out. All right? So fire can get canceled out by air, water, and earth. Meaning what? When somebody's fired up, when your husband or your wife or your mate, your significant other, or your man, or your woman is fired up, meaning anger, frustration, mad, pissed off. Learn to become the element of air, water, and earth, respectively. And kind of undetected. Um, indiscreet unknown to them be that element cancel out their fire for them within them without them knowing this is another form of mastering of communication so knowing the knowledge of elements you can play with these elements within your intimate relationship intimate relationships are perfect playing grounds and arenas and stadiums to enhance self if you have enough awareness self-control and discipline of self to actually utilize these principles and make that action occur and happen for you within you most importantly air nothing can cancel out air because air just is uh it just gets occupied by elements fire can blow in air you no, know, water is manipulated, the flow of water is manipulated by air or wind or breeze. And earth, you know, air can blow one speck of dirt onto another patch of grass. So air can't get canceled out. As far as getting canceled out, fire gets canceled out, air can't get canceled out. Which is why, once again, I said one of the elements to be is air or water or earth. Because that cancels out air, water, and earth cancels out fire. So fire represents somebody being pissed off, uh, throwing ill energy out, emanating lower nature, actions, behavior. Learn how to be air, water, and earth to put out that fire on them and within them without them knowing indiscreetly. Okay? In respect and consideration of them and for them. Earth. 
under getting canceled out, elements that get canceled out. Earth just transforms and transtextures by fire, water, and air. Earth can transform by fire, burn earth, it will turn into a different transformation and transtexture, a different texture of it. Uh, water can transform earth, it can, you know, you can build a sand castle, water and earth together, you can make, it can turn into a transformation. And air, uh, earth, of course, once again, it can blow things different, you know, back and forth. So earth um, can't get canceled out by the four elements. And then you have water. Water, nothing cancels out water. Um, but it can only begin, it can only either begin to somewhat evaporate by fire underneath it at a certain extreme high Celsius. Um, water can only soak into earth and gets influenced into manipulated movement by air, which is where you get the tsunamis, you get a whole bunch of things because things going on in the air atmosphere that um, create a tornado, you know, uh, you know, things of that nature. You know, air manipulation turns into water manipulation. So water, nothing cancels out water, nothing cancels out air, and earth can just be transformed and transtextured by fire, water, and air. So why am I saying all this? When somebody's fired up, when your mate is fired up to a certain degree, pissed off, mad, angry, they are on fire, which is why even if you touch them and you touch their arm or their body or their chest or their back or their skin in some way, they feel hot. And this is where that term or that saying says, my blood is boiling right now. And what happens when somebody, they start shaking? Isn't that what happens when you put fire, when you're boiling water for your tea or your coffee and you put water in the pot, you put the fire underneath and you put it all the way up? The water is settled, but then it starts to bubble and it starts to boil. That's why some people pissed off. They just, you know, they just hitting things and just pissed off and just, you know, and they're moving around, they're jittery and their nerves are jumping. That's a form of a boil or a boiling effect taking place. They are on fire and fire is on them and in them or a firing effect or a fire effect or a heating effect or an extreme Celsius um, grade. Celsius grade? That was that damn thing. Well, y'all know what I'm talking about. And know, once again, know and utilize, this is why I say know and utilize the principle of what I call and what I coin elemental cancellation. Because they're not a person or a personality or an individual. They're just displaying a certain element. So if they're displaying an element, your awareness, your knowledge to say, okay, I'm going to be this element then. And I'm going to put them out because they're not able to put their self out at this moment. They may not have the self-control or discipline or even knowledge or awareness of how to do so. So you do it for them without them knowing indiscreetly. It can be politely talking to them, staying in your space and your stillness, being silent, doing what you do. Approach them respectfully with no words of any kind of potential trigger. Have a straight face, plain face. No emotion displaying on your face. Your posture. Ignore them for a minute. They may subside, subdue, and come back to a sense of balanced state. Have faith in the unknown. That everything will equal out and balance in your favor and your benefit to your benefit in favor of you both to bring about that divine balance okay um and when you look at the category of cancels out we just went according to the category of elements that get canceled out let's put that to the side now we're focusing on elements that get canceled out elements that get canceled out so about fire again fire 
can only transform earth into different texture, smoke, color, and fume. And it can manipulate the chemistry and action of water. So it can only transform and manipulate. As far as canceling out, fire can't cancel out anything. It can't cancel out air. It can't cancel out water. And it can't cancel out earth. It can only at a certain kind of Celsius grade. An extreme Celsius and extreme heat or temperature can begin to boil water and water can and water can begin to evaporate out of that pot, which is why when you pour water in the pot and, you, and, it, and it gets to a certain kind of boiling point, when you pour that water back into the cup, the water is at a lower height in the cup than when you put it in the pot. So it begins to evaporate according to a certain kind of temperature or Celsius grade or extreme high Celsius grade. So fire doesn't necessarily cancel it out. It just brings about a transformation of evaporation or a, yeah, some kind of, uh, um, some kind of uh, phenomenon of evaporation to water. But it doesn't necessarily cancel it out completely. And it can only transform earth. So fire can't cancel out anything. So somebody's anger and they're on fire, pissed off. It can't cancel out air, fire, or earth. Or, pardon me, it can't cancel out air, water, or earth. So you need to cancel them out. You need to cancel out their element. You need to take on the responsibility of being air, water, or earth, or and earth. To cancel out their fire for them, on them, within them because they don't possess the ability to do so, even though they may have the willpower, but they're not willing and don't possess that power or capability to do so in that moment that they are possessed by anger, madness, frustration, or confusion. So you do it for them because fire can't cancel out shit, but air, water, and earth can cancel out fire. Know and utilize the principles or the principle of elemental cancellation. This is this will become of benefit to your intimate relationship with your mates, with your creation. Um, air can cancel out fire. We know that. And it can only manipulate water and earth. Earth can cancel out fire. It can infuse with water for transformation and possible relocation. So earth can't cancel out anything. We can cancel out fire, but it can only infuse with water for what? For transformation and possible relocation. And then you have last but not least, which is water. Water cancels out fire. Once again, here we go. Air, water, and earth. Or air and water is symbolic of spirit or spiritual nature. To be nothing, to be empty, to be zero at the time when there's something, there's all, there's madness, there's chaos. You become nothing. Become empty, become zero. Zero out your register. And have faith in the unknown. They may take something from you that they learn in sounds within their self. You just don't know. But have faith in the unknown. Okay. Um, and that's all. I uh, have for today. Also, uh, always keep in mind and heart of each other's contributions to the relationship. Always keep in mind and heart of each other's contributions to the relationship. What kind of contributions? Financial and emotional contributions. He may rub you, massage you a certain way, talk to you a certain way that you find soothing, relaxing, comfortable, and vice versa. She may do the same as well, or possess those same qualities and um, display those to you and for you. Um, that always keeps an awareness and attention on the harmonic 
energy of the experience and the relationship rather than the present static which may be taking place and it will bring a reboot to your moment to embrace that instead of the possession you may be currently influenced by in that same moment so never veer too far away of the contributions that they contribute to the relationship both financially and emotionally and mentally as well if they promote clarity health you know food shelter in some ways these are qualities that you do not or wouldn't be recommended or suggested that you take for granted any time and every time if you want to remain balanced and to remain balanced once again you have to have a knowledge of common sense consideration to have healthy communication am i as as i am as you are um Just one more thing as well. Um, you guys know why I touch upon principle a lot. Uh, whenever things are going not in your favor, so to seem, definitely one of you, hopefully both of you, learn how to immediately resort back to methods of principle within the chemistry of personality interaction and when personality interaction is not serving you in that moment neither one of you and or both of you resort back to principle when things are getting too damn personal in that moment keep the balance have common sense have consideration remain in healthy or balanced communication. Am I as, as I am, as you are, just as you are. I'll see you guys next time. So then, keep you envisioned. Keep you envisioned. One. Zero.